Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of cryptocurrency news. Today we'll cover the period of time from the 8th of uh, sorry from the 26th of March till the 8th of April. I am aiming to do this weekly um, but I had a busy week so it ended up to be almost two weeks. Anyway not much has happened. Um, the big event was um, in March. It, you can call it 12 inning on March 12th and since then it has been pretty stable it has been stable up in terms of the crypto price please like comment and subscribe please look at the links below to save some money so this is where we have uh, finished most recently uh, the biggest difficulty reduction in history um, it has happened minus 15% the blocks are now pretty fast they are uh, significantly faster than 10 minutes just because the price went down the difficulty has adjusted and then the price has gone up this is the, the race to devalue their currencies between Bank of Japan, Fed, ECB and Bank of England all of them are just devaluing their currencies and uh, this will probably just accelerate and as, as all of them are devaluing um, the relative value stays pretty much the same and currencies like Bitcoin benefit most unemployment chart quite a spectacular one um, this will be a significant event for the world economy um, here I am uh, mentioning Ray Dal Dalio's um, free stuff which he's posting he is an extremely successful investor and he has um, he's the CEO of Bridgewater Fund and this fund has absolutely amazing re uh, returns he has a very solid team and they analyze markets and they have analyzed what has happened in the past what dynamics there were between the biggest empires um, which had um, the reserve currencies of the world and uh, he is now publishing a series on um, the global reserve currencies and how they came uh, to existence and how they faded into insignificance and that involves countries like the um, UK, countries like China um, and I think Netherlands. It's, it's certainly a very good read and it gives you a very good perspective on what is likely to happen to US dollar and this could be accelerated by the current crisis. There are already uh, cracks showing um, the massive indebtedness is something that has been highly associated with the demise of a global currency so if if you were to um, guess what Ray Dalio thinks will happen um, it, it seems like he anticipates that because there is so much indebtedness and so much prosperity in US and because China um, is is emerging to be a number one power at some point the US dollar might lose its status as a world reserve currency and there could be a conflict between US and China um, so crypto Twitter always wants to see a line on the chart and a comment whether you need to go long or or short but you know go and and read Ray Dalio's uh, posts it will just make you a a, a better person uh, this is just uh, me posting some of the uh, lucky expiries um, these were uh, options sold at, at around 200 to 300 percent implied volatility some of them are a bit older but um, I, I was pretty lucky selling these and having almost all of them um, expire worthless 
uh, so that's probably more more luck than skill it it looks pretty decent here so all the puts well pretty much all the calls and all the puts that are listed here expired um, worthless and and I have sold all of these um, yeah so March 27th one was when uh, a lot of positions expired a lot of options and a lot of uh, futures contracts quarterly futures or, or, or futures at longer maturations they have expired on 27th and because a lot of you have a contract expired and want to have that position um, have that exposure to Bitcoin be it short or long at the time of expiry you want to open a new position so you want to roll over and it's important that you don't just put a single order in the order book especially if it's a big one um, it's important that you just spread it so putting that order uh, if you put that order in the order book a lot of people could realize that it's a genuine order not a spoof and they can just fr just front run you and make profit from your order sitting there so the best way if you have a decent sized order is just to split it in small chunks and, th and then just post these small chunks and that's just uh, Deribit mentioning the March expiry 42.3 thousand Bitcoin options have expired um, that means first of all that implied well, that the realized volatility will be smaller because the more options there are the more um, options sellers will have to rebalance and you know if, if there are so many options purchased m majority of these are bought by gamblers and sold by sophisticated uh, entities so if if people buy these options they increase the volatility because they are gamblers if there is volatility they profit if there is no volatility they are at loss they don't rebalance but options sellers have to rebalance so if you bought plenty of calls and the price went up you don't well majority of gamblers wouldn't just keep selling they would just ride their profits while options sellers if they sold call options and the price went up they will purchase on the way up to stay delta neutral so um, it's, it's important because all these options sellers no longer have to rebalance and that's 45% of all the open interest so that's a big chunk that means that definitely there will be less realized volatility and that will just pull the implied volatility together BitMEX whale bot um, I like to watch this this bot it's it's a good indicator of how much money crypto gamblers have and everyone's broke the this bot has not been posting much um, this might sound like gibberish but despite negative rates all over the place the ETH USD funding remains high because optionality component of longing this contract became very valuable due to implied volatility explosion ETH perpetual has more convexity than you think so in, in this po po uh, a post I'm just expressing that the uh, ETH USD contract is has an optionality built into it as you are buying this contract you're not only going long ETH USD you're also buying a call and a put option on ETH versus um, that will be versus mm -hmm. well it's actually complicated um, but you're you're kind of buying a call and a put option together with your long and because the ETH USD moves together with BTC USD um, that option uh, well it's it's a, it's buying an option if bitcoin moved in completely opposite directions to ETH USD, so every time bitcoin goes up ETH USD goes down so in that scenario everyone would uh, well in that scenario shorting this contract would be uh, good 
uh, but because ETUSD moves together with BTCUSD, longing this contract gives you the optionality component. So because the options became so expensive after tw uh, 12th of March, that optionality component became so expensive and, and significant, and this is why the, the funding is so positive. So in the real world, it's positive, but you know, on testnet, it's actually very low, and I was taking advantage of that in my uh, arbitrage trading account, which has made two bitcoins on um, on exploiting that optionality, uh, which is not too bad. So these puts are, are actually really, really expensive. So at that price point, um, I actually don't remember what the exact price exact spot price was but it was around 130 more or less so people were spending ten dollars per ETH to have a break-even um, price below 50 which is a little bit uh, insane um, well it, the options were just expensive and and there is not much else we can say about this um the skew.com is is a great website the implied volatility is deflating and what makes me interested is at what level does uh, the implied volatility become a bargain so i'm expecting the implied volatility to continue going down and reach some very low levels and at that levels i would be a buyer but we're not there yet and skew can helps me to look into this and decide what is cheap, what is expensive. They have some really good charts. I will make a new video. One of the, the uh, followers has requested that, but it's a remarkably good website. And on Bitcoin options, for example, uh, here you can see how um, implied volatility has exploded and how it's now retracing to some more reasonable values. So the six months volatility was around 70%. And now it's 95 so uh, it will go down uh, definitely the question is at at what level will it stop um, I, I expect some some more volatility than than usual on on crypto um, but I think within the next weeks the volatility the implied volatility will continue to go down the realized volatility is already down. Um, this is a post uh, making fun of Parplus Partners. It's a fund which was offering um, money management with no fees, and they only take money if if you make profit. Well, actually, someone uh, made a comment that actually that that zero fee was was a very reasonable fee because they lost everything and they had to close so their website is no longer available and and here um the ceo jim carney talks about volatility um, and it looks like they had a lot of positions which were um, re re relying on on the levels of volatility and they must have mispriced um, their positions uh, there's one thing this uh, this economic meltdown made apparent. Our society is over leveraged with too much debt and not enough savings. And that's pretty clear. People are generally struggling in the Western world. world. Uh, Binance has delisted FTX uh, bull and bear tokens. Quite an interesting move. Um, I, I don't really know why uh, they must have claimed that it's because of the risk, but there must be another story to it. In my view, it, it, it's a good thing. These bull and bear tokens are very expensive to hold. And if there was only a possibility, I would be uh, keen to sell these uh, contracts, but I can't. They're quite similar to um, ETUSD contracts. So on ETUSD the funding is is positive and if well it's it's similar to going long ETUSD that there is an optionality component which is expensive. 
my testnet account has hit 2640% gain over a few weeks that's a decent gain feel free to uh, click the links and, and and watch these videos to see how nearly risk-free profits are made although i must disclose that at a few points i did go into um, some gambling positions but these positions were always gambling um, with odds that favored me rather than my counter parties um, and a funny fact, I didn't draw a single line on the chart and then probably a lot of crypto traders would would say that, uh, that it's impossible to make gains without drawing lines on the charts. Another um, uh, interesting remark is, is actually IMF, which is International Monetary Fund, will bail out central banks with their fake currency, which is called SDR, Special Drawing Rights. So if you're expecting uh, sovereigns to default there is one more institution that will bail them out and that's IMF and then IMF will um, uh, will collapse at some point probably um, anyway that's that's another uh, discussion um, apparently there is no physical gold and it's very difficult to transport it due, due to the lockdown so there were some huge discrepancies between the gold spot market and the gold paper market, which is derivatives. Um, my view is that it would be counterintuitive for properties not to go down against USD because there is so much USD being printed because of the dash for cash. Um, and I, I believe that properties will go down for several reasons. Um, here the leveraged real estates um, well leveraged real estate kind of paper so so derivatives are, are going down a lot um, over the past 120 years when sovereign debt has gotten as high as it is now it has been result result hundred percent of the time by either default or restructuring or inflation um, so it, it's obvious that this debt has never been repaid and it will never be repaid so it's an important remark um, liquidity bands uh, showing well liquidity um, so that's bitmex this is how much liquidity there was so this is uh, how much um, well how much market makers are posting on the in the order book and this is how much less they are posting now so the market makers are pretty wrecked um, here is my short rant about Bitsy so Bitsy is a new exchange um, they have some ties to uh, Blockstream and Blockstream I have a lot of respect for Blockstream um, so Bitsy uh, had some regulatory issues they have registered in Dubai and actually they registered with the wrong license then they have moved the registration probably to British Virgin Islands um, they have an exchange which in my view has fake volume and fake um, open interest and they had some very um, uh, good opportunity to buy this June future when the true market price was much higher so it was $500 per BTC at this point and it was around 5% so if you just went long this short this and if you have waited this out then you have made 5% on uh, on the, the value and, and you could have leveraged this up a lot um, however, there was a significant risk. Uh, Bitsy, because they, I believe they are lying about their volume and open interest, um, they might just stop trading. They have a strong incentive. They had a strong incentive not to mm, close the shop uh, because in March they have issued their token. So it's, it's important for them to make sure that they survive until that. 
and they have managed to sell their token and the price of their token is not doing particularly well. However, there was something interesting. So uh, Bitsy had Ethereum bids wiped, price has hit $10. There was auto deleveraging and now they are hiding that. They have deleted their chart from their website, which is really shady. So at some point I recommended the long there. Um, um, hopefully, well, uh, I, I believe anyone who followed this advice has been delivered. And if you are hedged somewhere else, then your other position uh, made a run for money. Um, so actually highly likely that if you have opened a long on Bitsy and a short on, let's say, Deribit, then your Bitsy at some point on this massive move has been liquidated and um, or uh, uh, because of the because the move has been so massive and that they're a bit short or whatever short you had um, has been running down to make a lot of profits um, so here I'm just talking about uh, that discrepancy which which uh, I have mentioned before um, the initial exchange offering that they have sold had 20% discount and 40% discount depending on for how long you are uh, locking your uh, tokens and um, so there is a chance that if in six months um, if your tokens are locked for six months, in six months there, there may not be Bitsy on the market, potentially. Another thing that, well, there are a few things that uh, worry me. Well, one of them is that they are rolling out lending. So you give them your money and they give you some interest. I would never give them any money uh, for lending just because they are lying about so much stuff on the website. Um, however, on the flip side, they are responsive, they are helpful, they have a good team which is which seems to be there 24-7. Swapman is a guy who I have a lot of respect for. Um, he seems to be involved, he offers market making, so maybe he's market making on their uh, exchange, not sure. Um, they don't have angry people on Telegram, or maybe they just block them. Um, so it looks like uh, that dump to ten dollars per ETH didn't hurt too many people. Um, let's move on. Um, Binance has has been issuing a lot of uh, warnings, so Bitcoin price has dropped below six thousand. The market is volatile, so make sure to trade with caution. Why would they send a second tweet like this in 24 hours? Are they getting plenty of angry customers? P probably. I'm sure a lot of people were liquidated. Um, funny how, uh, well, this is, this is one of the retweets. Funny how characteristically uh, each country re reacts to the coronavirus. China tracks its citizens every move. Hungary becomes a dictatorship. The US gives money to businesses, the Japanese conceal the problem, and British bravely but stupidly seek herd immunity. Um, it's just interesting how all the countries are different. It kind of makes this all beautiful. Um, Coin Market Cap is an institution which is extremely popular, probably more popular than it should be because it lists so much fake volume. Binance, I believe, does some fake volume. It's, it's a massive exchange, a very good exchange, a very positive thing for crypto, but I do believe that they fake some of their volume. And now um, Joe007, he um, kicks fuss about a coin market cap being purchased by Binance. Um, Alistair Milne has tweeted that Coinbase had inflows of 1.3 billion, Tether has grown 1.5 billion, Kraken reporting a surge and, and now hiring. It sounds like an unprecedented amount of buying the fucking dip to Alistair Milne. Um, Trump, well, 
in, in my view, Trump will do whatever he can to keep the valuations flat or going up. Um, while the risk of global economy collapse is super high, you cannot underestimate the guy with the printer. The stocks might break all time high and the trust in fiat may be lost way later than you expect. So it's not particularly reasonable to just short everything because you're shorting against US dollars and maybe there will be so much US dollars that they will be slowly becoming worthless. And maybe you are betting for fiat to lose uh, the credibility just now and and maybe this is maybe this will not be, ca be the case maybe the fiat will still kick about for a decade implied volatility has dumped below 100 percent and and i believe it will just keep uh, keep going down um, so this is a chart to watch um, this is the the skew so it's something i'll mention in my next video about skew.com uh, so now the skew is in positive uh, territories and that means that it's more profitable to go short and then buy a call rather than plainly to buy a put. Uh, so that's what, what skew is. It, it just Skew means that if, if people buy uh, puts then the skew is positive, if people buy calls then the skew is negative and that creates an interesting dynamic and um, rather than doing what everyone else is doing so if everyone is buying calls you can just buy features and then sell a put and you have a call it's it's a synthetic call or put um john brown he is a trader which uh, certainly does some volume and has some good insight he says, if you short BTC, your collateral should be BTC. If you long BTC, your collateral should not be BTC. What happened during the crash to longs on BTC margin platforms will happen to USD margin shorts in the next bull. And that's, uh, for example, um, CME. Uh, a lot of these platforms will struggle if Bitcoin explodes in price to like 20K or higher. Uh, Suzu, he's one of the guys I respect a lot. Um, he says, it's my birthday and I'll buy if I want to. And then he bought like 1.6 million worth of, of BTC. And if he still holds that, that's a very profitable position. Recessions are accelerants for change. Every time, without exception, watch closely. Totally agreed. Uh, Bitcoin halving is the halvening and may not appeal to a large audience. Um, Tour Demister says, I agree with Adam 3 as which is Adam Beck, to start using quantitative hardening and, ac and actually it's a, a, a an excellent term. In a sentence, quantitative hardening 3 is upon us. In May, the supply of new Bitcoins will be reduced by 50%. How awesome definition of halvening is that everyone well a lot of people in finance know what quantitative easing is and no government would ever do any quantitative hardening <laughs> like um, the, they do well the, they attempt tightening um, but they have never really properly tightened ethereum short-term realized volatility is back to the pre pre 12th of march levels so the implied volatility um, remains higher, but it's just dropping down. So we're going back to the baseline. And uh, if we hit the baseline, I would be very interesting in, uh, interested in buying some volatility because I anticipate a lot of volatility related to the coronavirus. There is a common misconception that there is no liquidation risk when trading future spreads. But during 12th, 13th of March, market crash, many traders got liquidated on these strategies. And here they explain their risks. Um, so a spread is, for example, you go long futures, short swap, or the other way around. And um, you are not supposed to get liquidated. But if there is such a massive discount or premium on the futures, then you will get liquidated, unfortunately. And it could hurt a lot, especially if you get liquidated at the very bottom and then the price takes off. 
um, here Whalepool is doing some decent work on uh, the burn rate of BNB and the reported USDT volume. So it's good that people are looking at this, um, just making sure that that the exchanges are not faking volume too much. Apparently, Bitfinex has supplied most liquidity during the big Bitcoin crash. So when things hit the fun, you know which exchange has the trust has the liquidity and that's that's Bitfinex. Paolo Arodino of Bitfinex is throwing his two cents. Some big exchanges with half gazillion devs and plenty of financing rounds having 300 plus dollar spreads and high latency across the high volatility periods. Um, the spreads were massive and they were hitting 300. Uh, it was not the case on Bitfinex. Um, so he was just making fun of these exchanges, which cannot keep tight spreads. Quality of developers and infrastructure is measured in these moments. A few crazy good coders are better than army of developers in shiny offices. Australian authorities to check every proposed foreign investment during coronavirus crisis. So apparently they have dropped the threshold to zero because there is so much capital in distress and a lot of things will be sold at well, sold for pennies, and they decided not to allow foreigners uh, and China to uh, buy too much stuff without government approval. So if, if there is a large influx of um, buyers from abroad, Australia will not sell their assets for pretty much free. They will, um, they will just uh, stop these purchases. Um, Willy Wu, he has been analyzing the halvening and uh, stock to flow model and here is his uh, maybe a little bit of a justification uh, why the halvening may not be as profitable as it could be for hodlers. So the real picture of demand and supply is not halving of sell pressure, it's closer to 3000 BTC per day going to 2100 per day, a 30% reduction not 50% reduction. This is not his analysis, it's from others in the industry who do not want to be named and this includes selling from the exchange fees. So um, it's not just the miners who are selling, it's also the um, exchanges who are selling. Um, this contains Photoshop. Um, yeah, so this was uh, the British Quinn in uh, in the outfit which was uh, Bitcoin but it's it's no longer available so here I have posted without a comment my post that I actually started liking ETH and it has gone up significantly um, Travis Kling says remember six months ago when everyone was wondering how the US government would could ever possibly get up enough political and literal capital to implement modern monetary theory. Well, now the modern monetary theory is, is coming. You can read the Ray Dalio to learn more about this, but uh, they will just print a lot of money. Probably they will give it to the hands of people and probably this, this is the best outcome actually of, uh, well, the best way out of this crisis. Here, Glimmer Coin Glim is just painting um, his name on the um, on the chart, which demonstrates uh, the size of the orders in the order book, which is hilarious in my view. Uh, this shows the traffic um, on the websites, the the rate of change in in, in traffic and. Uh, these exchanges um, have gained most traffic over the past volatile month and these have have uh, lost Deribit is one of the big winners OKEX is is one of them as well um, this is just some banter Paolo Arodino just uh, makes fun of a guy who has been complaining about um, Tether having a fee built into the protocol that that fee has been zero forever 
but Lefteris Carapatessa says WTF who uses this uh, uh, this crap um, and complains about the fee while Paul Arod uh, Arodino says everyone's and their cats and their dogs uses USD T actually and the fee has been zero since inception so that's some good banter all order book depth is is still pretty bad so a lot of market makers went bust uh, on the recent move and they and the market makers have not come back so there are not enough new market makers to populate the order books and people are expecting volatility and this is why the spreads are higher an interesting move, uh, an, inter an interesting event on uh, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, for one hour and a half, there were no blocks after the halvening on, on, on BCH. 900 tr transactions waiting to be confirmed. This is actually not accurate. This is probably not true. Uh, this was probably some imposter account. Anyway, uh, the, the, the 1.5 hour without a block has happened and um, it will be hard to uh, well for, for a few hours um, the blocks will be so this is a decent response to Donald Trump's flattening the curve now when are you planning to flatten this curve Donald Trump trillions of dollars printed 24 billion a lot trillion dollar of government debt it's not something insignificant and this is an, an interesting post so this is Swapman and, and, and I do respect this guy um, and uh, BTC VIX not sure how accurate this is uh, but he says that the ship has sailed Arthur wants out he's always on some trip doing whatever doesn't care some uh, is raising a family and also doesn't care engagement from once engagement kings bitmex nearing all-time lows um, maybe that is the case uh, there isn't much development happening on, on bitmex but bitmex is still the king right so that's me uh, I have gone through all the news thank you for watching please like please comment and subscribe and have a look at the links below